Hi, I'm Trev Luca Spa Wu. You've seen me in such fine quality, epic Star Wars videos, Galaxy of Heroes. Okay, let's look at this problem here. The specific heat of graphite is 0.71 joules per grams times Celsius. We're going to calculate the energy needed to raise the temperature of 75 kilograms of graphite from 294K to 348K. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram times Celsius. Will that be important to us? No. I put that up there originally thinking that was part of the problem because I was copying and pasting. It turns out we don't, are not dealing with water. Okay, but we are dealing with our formula where Q equals M cap, where Q is our energy. Okay, that's the energy we need. Okay, our mass is the 75 kilograms of graphite. They gave us the specific heat right here. Okay, and then our delta T, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is connected to this. So we have all the pieces of information. We have the formula. Now it's a question of we need to do a little bit of work to uh, calculate things. Now, one of the important things you have to realize is your units have to stay the same. They must be. Otherwise, while you might get the right number, your units are going to be off. So your number is going to be off by a factor of. Okay? We cannot afford an oopsie like this. So we see joules per gram here. Here we have kilogram. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to change this from kilograms to grams. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So that's going to be easily 75,000 kilograms. Um, so we know that our mass would be 75,000 kilograms. Now we have to look at our temperature change here as well. Okay, so when we look at our temperature change, we're going to look at our ending temperature and subtract the starting temperature. So that's going to be 348 minus 294. So that's, I think we're good. So let's look at this. So Q is going to be equal to, well, we have a mass. And our mass, I have that in red, and we know that's going to be 75,000 grams. And notice I put it in red so you can see where I'm getting that from. We have a specific heat that's in green. We got that there, 0 0.71, okay, joules per grams times Celsius, multiplied by our change in temperature. Okay, so what about our change in temperature? Let's do a quick uh, thing here, uh, 348 minus 294, and that gives us a 54 degree change. So we have all those numbers put in, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply that out, and that's going to tell us how many joules of energy is needed to raise the temperature of 75 kilograms of graphite from 294K to 348. So when we calculate it, we can go ahead and it's 2,875,500 joules. That's the total amount of energy that we're going to need in order to raise that. Now, we can also look at it and say, well, that's a large number. Is there another way to express it? We can also divide by a thousand to convert this to kilojoules. Okay, so that's going to give us a big whopping 2,875.5 kilojoules. That is the same. But what if we were going to use scientific notation? Well, then it's going to be 2.9 times 10 to the third kilojoules. So that's our first problem that we have solved here. Okay? All right. Let's go on with the next one. 
Now our next one, we have a 46.2 gram sample of copper, is heated to 95.4 degrees Celsius, and then placed in a calorimeter containing 75 grams of water at 19.6 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of both the water and the copper is 21.8. What is the specific heat of the copper, given the specific heat of the water? Okay, well, there's a couple of things that we need to understand here, okay? Water is going to have its own energy, but the copper will also have its own energy. Now, the only way that this is going to work is ultimately that the Q of the water is going to equal the Q of the copper. That's what we got to look at, okay? So the first thing we need to do, we need to find what is the Q for the water. That's where we got to start, okay? Making sure I got everything here, because then after that we can go and find it for our copper. Now, wait, what in the world, what in the world do we need to go and worry about the water. Well, the water's got a bit of a change, doesn't it? Because there is, there's some facts here, some factors that we're looking at. One, let's look at our stuff for the copper, okay? And then we're going to look at the stuff of the water, because this is where the explanation needs to come in, okay? So let's go with this. For one thing, we got to look at our mass, and we got to look at our specific heat, and we got to look at our delta T, don't we? Okay? So when we look at the mass, okay, so we got a mass of 46.2 grams for copper. Okay? And for water, it is 75.0 grams. Okay? We have a specific heat. Well, we don't know what it is about the copper, but we definitely know about the water, don't we? Because it's one, okay? One calorie. Now, a calorie is the same as a joule, and it's a small C calorie, not, you know, not to compare to the big C calorie. So we'll say one joule per gram multiplied by degrees Celsius. And then we have to look at our delta T. Our delta T, delta T, delta T. Um, Oops, dropped my calculator. Hmm. So we have copper starting at 95.4 degrees Celsius, and it ends at 21.8 degrees Celsius. Oops, got to pick that up. All right. So with that, hmm. What do we find here? I think, yeah, I'm remembering my uh, index cards from last year that I've got these. So delta T is 95.4 minus 21.8. So it'd be 94 minus 21.8. Or should I say, actually, that would be incorrect. It's the final temperature minus the initial, right? So it's 21.8 minus 94, 95.4, sorry. So what I'm doing here, why am I doing this? I'm showing you all the facts that we have. Because when I said, oh, let's go find out the Q for the water first. Well, wait, why are we doing that? Well, because we have our mass, we have our specific heat of the water. We also have our delta T. Okay, and our delta T, the water originally was 19.6, and it ended at 21.8. So it'd be 21.8 minus 19.6. Okay, now that delta T for the water is 2.2 degrees Celsius. That's what we have for the water. So we can actually now remember the idea is we're looking at how much energy does the water contain because it would essentially have the same energy of the copper. Because when they both come in, you have copper that's temperature hot, you're dropping it into a cup that's got water in it. 
what's going to happen with the heat? The heat's going to flow from the copper into the water, and it's going to warm up the water and cool down the copper, right? Because heat goes from a warmer object to a cooler object. This is why when some of you were little kids, you decided to touch that hot stove, even though mom and dad told you don't do that. Okay, you still burned yourself because you were the cooler object. Okay, and the stove was the hotter object. So the heat went from the stove into you. You cried, you got burned, okay, and you learned not to touch the hot stove again. Bravo, you've matured so much. Okay, let's go on with this. So this is why we have to figure out why we're looking at the Q of the H2O first because we don't have the C. Once we figure out the Q for this, we can plug it into here and get our specific heat of copper. Okay, are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm not, no, I am, I'm worried, don't worry. Okay, so let's put it this way. So I'm gonna look at the Q of our H2O is equal to 75 grams multiplied by one, that was our specific heat, right? one joule per gram times Celsius, right? Multiplied by our temperature change, which was 2.2, okay? So what did we end up getting? Well, if you multiply this all out, you're gonna walk away with 165 calories. You could say 165 joules if you wish, that's fine. So we walk away with the Q of H2O equaling 165 joules. Great. Now that also means that the Q of our copper also has to be 165. Because remember, when the heat stops exchanging between the two items, it's now at an equilibrium. Okay. So when it's at an equilibrium, then both sides have it. So now we can go ahead and look at the Q of our copper, which is equal to the mass of our copper times the specific heat of our copper times the delta T of our copper. Notice I put the Cu there so that you guys are following along. Okay, what things do I need to put in? Um, let's see, I've got 165 joules is equal to, let's see, what was the mass of the copper? 46.2 grams multiplied by X, which is our specific heat, multiplied by our change in temperature. Now, if that change in temperature is a bit bigger, it's 73.6, okay? So, we went ahead, we found what was the energy in the water. We said it had to be the same number energy of the copper. We've put that in. We've just simply plugged it in there, and it's called plug and chug. That's pretty much it. Be calm and plug and chug. Okay? So now we end up cranking this out on our beloved calculators, and we walk away with that copper has a specific heat of 0 0.49 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. Boom, all that work for this. Yep, that's right. You wants to be the player, you got to pay the player's price. That's how it works, okay? All right, guys, I'm hoping that this will uh, help you out and take it easy. I'm Trev Lucas Spa Wu, and let's face it, you're not. Adios, muchachos. Vamonos.